Welcome back to WJR's Business Biography with your host, Jeff Sloan. If you ask most people what are the key hallmarks associated with business success, you'd likely hear a focus on things like revenue, profits, and growth. And while these are undeniable factors, when you ask Troy Clogg, he focuses on something a little more human. His focus? Providing the best possible service, hiring the best people, and creating a true team camaraderie. It's people first, then profit. Yeah, because profit's not just money, right? So the world thinks of profit, it gets very superficial out there. I mean, our, our world is, in my opinion, more and more focused on superficial things and selfish things, as opposed to a greater, deeper meaning for why we are all here. So we can't change the fact that human beings were born to be together. No matter what technology we wrap around ourselves, whether it was 200 years ago or 200 years in the future, we're, we're designed to be together and we're designed to help each other. Some are leaders, some are followers. This meat sack, as I call it, that we're walking around, it doesn't change much. The best way of saying this is we don't move snow from one side of the parking lot to the other and we don't make the grass shorter or the patio pretty. We accumulate and sell you the best human talent we can find. And then we put a shovel in their hand or a rake or whatever, educate them up on how to do it the right way and be professional in it. I mean, a local business friend of mine would say people before profits. So I've certainly stolen that phrase from him and had plenty of years when I didn't have profit, but I had great people. So what else is there in life, really, than surrounding ourselves with the best people, whether as employers, our families, we talk some about our families, our community. It really is my focus on you. And so with a keen focus on hiring the best people, that leads to providing the customer with the best possible service. So the difference the client should expect, I guess it really depends on which service line we're picking, right? So where we started cutting grass, in all fairness, we're probably very similar to anybody else who cares and does a nice job, who knows all the aspects of it. But with those of us with discerning eyes would drive around and say, you know, they're skipping that, they're not doing this. I don't know so much that the customer sees that or would expect anything different. We do internally. The landscape design build side, you should expect that you're working with the team that's won best in show for the Michigan green industry, two out of the last six years, which is humbling and, and pretty cool because we are, if you enter your jobs into the awards judgment, it's if not the only, one of the only judging entities in the country where your peers actually go to the job site. But most of the national entries, you send in pretty pictures. I could do a beautiful job at your house. I could take some awesome pictures and it might win an award. But in this case, my peers or people like me are out looking at the job and they don't know who did them, right? These are all anonymous blind entries. So pretty proud of that. So you should expect that you will be uh, an award winning job, whether your job is entered or not. And then on the snow side, you're working with an ISO contractor, you're working with somebody who follows industry standards, who expects to get paid according to industry standards, and who hires and trains the best, uses all the safe equipment, full-time mechanics, not anything else than that, just, just simply the best. And we, and we want the highest risk, most challenging sites, to be honest. And you know, we want to hear from an automotive company that says, don't you dare let our line shut down. The fines are you know, a million dollars an hour, some crazy number or at the airport, or like important things, like, no, yeah, we, we're, your, we're the team. We want to be there. Or the office building, or the mall, or the movie theater, et cetera. You know, I don't want to take anything away from the civil servants of our country because I respect them all so much, but we're one of the few trades that really should be considered the same, when, especially when it comes to snow, right? All of the wonderful people who service us in, in the fire departments, all they do, and I mean this with all, all due respect, they're training, they're getting ready, they're ready to go, their equipment's geared up. Not quite sure when the next catastrophe is gonna happen. Our EMTs that are out there, our emergency room doctors, the list goes on, our police force, our military. The snow side for many, many job sites is the same way. The expectation is the same. I mean, to put together, it just snowed, as you said. Three or 400 people spread over hundreds of miles, square miles. Some places, are, it was still raining. Some places were piling four inches of snow in the same hour and you have to be ready for any of it so it's uh yeah we take it seriously and we would expect the people that hire us to respect that and appreciate that it's how i'm hardwired i see 
not only what I do, I see a crooked molding. I see a caulk line that's missing. I, I mean, I, it's just what I see. And so then I try to fix it. So I see the same thing in myself, the stuff that isn't right and the stuff that the caulk line that isn't perfect and the things that I could get better at and constantly try to and work on it and study it and read and, you know, been a fun run. I'm broken like everybody else out there, but I, uh, I try to do a whole lot better than the average person. That's important to you. That makes you feel good. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. You know, and, and, and in part to our families and in part to our teams. I mean, one of the guys, I, one of my leaders that I reached out to today in the middle of the night when I was, I said, hey, you know, I was driving around and helping. I said, the site looks great, blah, blah, blah. He said, yeah. Hey, sorry I didn't respond sooner. Five guys didn't show up. And I'm on, I'm on one of the sidewalk machines. No worries. We're still going to be done. There it is. Yeah. That's, I mean, I get emotional just yeah. talking about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, like, that is, like, can't ask for better. Yeah. That kind of dedication from a team member. And, and, yeah. And he, he was, and he yeah. went. And I said, why didn't you ask for help? He said, right. I, don't, I need right. it. Right. See, the reason you're getting choked up right now when you say that is you, man, that matters to you. Oh, yeah. When you talk about picking your team and picking the right guys, that's what you're talking about. And the example for all business owners out there is that, so we've all, we've all seen an organizational chart. Everybody's business is a little different, but every one of those organizational charts has this pyramidal look where there are a few people on the top and a whole bunch of people on the bottom, historically. Man, that is upside down, entirely upside down in my world. My org chart is flipped over on purpose without the people who actually do the work in any trade, in any, whatever the work is, without them, the rest of us are relatively meaningless. So aren't they really the most important part? Absolutely. Thinking about you, when you think about you, uh, how, how much is you, Troy Claude, tied to, and how much is your business tied to you? It was tied to me. I mean, emotionally, it's very tied to me. Financially, it's tied to me. Like most business owners, there's some personal guarantees, blah, 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 right? But my team's success is their success, and it's my success, and it's our success. And doesn't everybody want to kind of work themselves out of a job and know that it's being done as good or better by someone else? It's, again, like being a parent. Don't we want our children to be better in life than we were, whatever better means to us? Yeah. So... I'm attached to everything, but at this point in the career, in my career, and in the evolution of the of this company, is that if I get enough guys like the guy I just talked about that can make it happen on their own, then I can rinse, repeat, duplicate, and if I want to stay home and sleep during a snowstorm, I can. My phone doesn't ring. I mean, it used to like crazy, but it doesn't ring in the middle of an event unless I want it to. And that's largely because you've got the best people on the job and people you can trust and count on. You yeah. train well. They yeah. have you a long time. If they listen to any of this interview, they, they know, you know, I reach out and go, hey, hey, where does anybody need any help? Because I'm out half most of the time. I can't sleep. It's what I've been doing my whole life. I'm driving around. I drove a plug truck here, right? I'm, I'm driving. I'm helping. They're like, no, we're good. Come on, man. Let me help somewhere. No, 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 no. We're good. So I just go find stuff to help with, whether they like it or not. And I think it matters, too, that not only you're with your team, but that you also pick up a shovel occasionally and show them you're, you're right in this with them, right? Amen. I reached out to my COO today in the middle of the night because he's the super early morning guy just by trade or by habit, I should say. Goes to work at some point. I don't know what it was, 5 o'clock in the morning or something. And we were discussing a, a topic. And he's like, yeah, I'm on the east side. I'm like, he's out shoveling with the crews, helping wherever he could, you know. Yeah, when, when you do something together, I, I can't stop saying the family thing. When, when a family sits around a kitchen table at night and has a conversation, it's way different than when you don't. And when you go out and work side by side, I mean, probably the thing I miss the most, not physically because I'm not getting any younger here, but what I miss the most is working side by side with somebody all day long. To me, it was like dual work. We could use a shovel or do whatever the job was and actually generate revenue and, and take care of a customer. But if I was working with Jeff for the day and I didn't really know him, I could learn so much about him and my, what was going on in his life and how, how I could help him or he could help me. Or it was It's pretty priceless stuff. And for Troy, at the heart of it all is a strong company culture that ties it all together. Well, the culture of the company is 
again, broken down to a couple of words, transforming lives, meaning everywhere you go, you need to try to make a difference in the lives of the people you're with. Whether you're sitting in a meeting discussing what lawns you're going to cut today, whether you're sitting in a strategic planning meeting deciding what is this company going to look like in 12 or 24 or 36 months, whether it's standing in front of a customer. Those are kind of the actions of the company. But simply put, beliefs drive behaviors, drive results. So most, so often businesses just talk about results. We want to grow by 5%. We want to add three people. We want to have this many more square feet of something. That's awesome. But that's the final step. Before that, you have to behave in some way to achieve that. And before that, you have to actually believe that the stuff can happen. And when you're not doing it alone, when you're doing it with a team of people, they all have to believe it can happen. So, I mean, I've done this in my family goals. I'm partnering the kids. I have a, a riot. One of, the, one of the boys took me up on the offer. I said, write your life plan in five-year chunks, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. I've challenged all of them with this. I did this years ago. I was challenged by a mentor. And I mean the big stuff at 25, 30, 35, 40, et cetera. Are you married or not? Do you have kids or not? Do you live in the city or the country? Approximately how much money do you make? What are your hobbies? Like just some really big chunks. And I still challenge my team when we meet one-to-one -one over those same things. If you can define those things, you can typically, and believe it. In fact, if you can believe that, you'll typically behave towards that. Yeah, I'm going to be married. Yeah, I'm going to live in the country or I'm going to live in the city. And the results come. And then you can kind of check that box and go, hey, man, I set that out there 10 years and look at me. Um, I'm here in eight years. Welcome back to WJR's Business Biography with your host, Jeff Slow. What's a business's purpose? It's to make a profit, of course. Profits that can be distributed to the company's shareholders and are reinvested to grow the business. After all, isn't that what business is all about? Well, yes, it is, of course, for the most part. But for Troy Claude, it is that and more. His business even has a nonprofit focus, all while being a very much for-profit business. We all go through a journey of life. So I was in my early 40s. I think we're all a little different at that age than we were in our 30s or 20s, and so to speak. And just reflecting on where I was in life, I'd gone through some personal drama and, and so forth. And I thought, you know, is my life really going to be known? As, is my legacy really going to be that I could cut grass and plow snow and assemble people to do that? Is that really going to be it? So I mixed in my faith. And anyway, all that being said, it came to, hey, I'm going to take the most disliked part of what we do for a living, which is salt. Nobody likes salt. It's in the car, it gets on your sidewalk, it messes up this, it kills the grass, yada, yada. Nobody likes salt. I said, well, then I'm going to take the least friendly thing in, in all of our market lines, and I'm going to make it the most generous thing. So we colored it pink. We already had pink in our logo, so it was a good play off of that. People ask me all the time, did you lose your wife or your mother or your sister? No, no. Per I mean, I've lost, unfortunately, a lot of friends over life to cancer, but no specific story. And so the birth of Hot Pink De-Icer. So that was 10 or 11 years ago. I've never taken a single penny from that company personally. It lost money for years till it built off. Anybody who started a company knows you're not always making money. And so we give 15 cents of every bag sold to families financially devastated due to typically a breast cancer situation, but it could be any cancer. And over that 11 years, it grew from just doing some local stuff here in Michigan. Now we're supported by manufacturers across the United States and Canada as of a year ago and blown it up across both. And and what are the Created sales? Created a 501c3 and away we go. The sales on that product roughly are? The donations turn into about $60,000 this year at 15 cents at a time. And, uh, and that's just our first year at being national. So I assume we'll be well over 100 grand a year as life goes on and growing. And growing. Just right. from just from taking, and, and I challenge every business owner to this all the time. It's just, this is a $6 product, more or less. Six or $7 product. So... 15 cents is no big deal. Many believe that doing good has a way of coming back to you. And for Troy Claude, the good came back to him with an opportunity to hire his dad to work side by side with him at his company. How do I want to say this? I, I grew up in a place where I loved my parents deeply. And my dad was a World War II veteran, a big faith-filled guy. 
had the blessing of actually hiring him when he was 71. He worked for me for 17 years. When his employer said, you have to retire at 70, I said, I was 28 or nine years old. I said, hey man, you want to work together? And he, so he came in a few days a week from 71 till 88 years old. Working with my dad was a, a what a blessing. And, and in, I don't have regrets in life, but boy, I wish I had uh, focused a little harder on it at the time, to be honest. So I was about 29 years old. Dad was 71. He had been forced to retire, so to speak. You can't work for us past the age of 70. I knew he was bored. My business was blowing up. I needed help. I'm like, hey, man, you want to come help? Worked out perfect. He worked two or three days a week, got away from mom, so to speak, had a little time. And it was awesome. Really detailed guy. He was the guy. You got the people who were with me that were then with me then still tell the stories of my dad walking around with their time card. Because he'd be the one who'd walk out in the morning and go, so Jeff, why were you two minutes late yesterday? <laughs> they tell a story, and I'm like, you rock, Dad. <laughs> Thanks, because I didn't. I'm not that. I'm not that confrontational in life, or at least I certainly wasn't that. I'm like, you rock, man. And they still tell those stories. So yeah, so mom and dad lived that quintessential life. They got married in World War II, blah blah blah. They were married for 74 years and passed away three months apart, both at 94 years old. How cool! It was a cool run. Went by fast. And while most would describe their snow removal and landscape company as, well, a snow removal and landscape company, if you ask Troy what his business purpose is, you get something like this. So, you know, on our website, in my vivid vision or painted picture, which is all over my website, in giant letters on the side of our trucks, it says our purpose is to transform lives. Our passion is the lawn and snow industry but our purpose is to transform lives. All that means is anywhere I go or anybody with my logo on goes, see if you can make a difference in their lives. See if you can help them see the world a different way than they did before they met you. My business matters a lot, even after or after 40 years, whatever it's been. The part of the journey of owning a business is also exiting a business or transferring the ownership or leadership. So the leadership is transferred a lot. I am, again, I might create some vision and wisdom, but I'm not deciding who gets a paycheck and who doesn't. And, and so I'm not doing that piece of the business. I had a mentor years ago say, Troy, you know, there's only two ways to leave a business and one of them's on a stretcher. So I recommend you design your way out, whatever that may be. And so that's kind of the age and stage I'm in. Success is replacing myself. Success is having people turn out better than I did. Success, if, if, if whatever they want to be, if they want to be financially more successful, if I can help them with things I've learned and they can do it in a shorter amount of time, God bless them. If they want to have more time with their families, success is helping other people reach their goals. Because this vehicle of Troy Clog Landscape Associates or Snow Associates, I didn't know almost 40 years ago that it was going to be my vehicle to take me to this age, into the future to help. I didn't know, but it has been, and it's been awesome. I meet people like you, man, I have met some of the most interesting people and I would consider that success. And, and again, learned a lot from the people I've met that all the stuff I'm sharing is a little bit from my parents and a little bit from, you know, we're all kind of go that way and a whole bunch from the successful people I've met along the way and take a little piece from every one of them. And the same thing I try to impart in my kids as I was raising them up. I said, don't be like me. Don't be like mom. Don't be like any individual person. Pluck the best piece of every person you can and make yourself yourself. Be you. Be proud of it. And it's working out so far. Now I'm out of the grandkids. And of course, I just had to ask Troy. Now remember your biggest doubter? That was your mom. Remember, Troy? What would she say now about all the success you've earned with your great company? In those teenage years when I was out screwing around and doing what a lot of teenage boys do, and but I said, Mom, I'm working hard all day. She said, yeah, but you don't come home at night. I'm like, yeah, we'll get through it. I love Mom to death too, but again, very motivating. For my personality profile, if you tell me I can't do something that I really passionately believe I can do, probably going to do it. <laughs> and we couldn't let Troy go without asking for advice. Those of you out there chasing your dreams, what advice does Troy have to offer? do something, whether it's run the shovel, whether it's do concrete work, drywall work, if you're willing, mechanic, if that's your aptitude and your love, you love to work with your hands, you love to solve problems, 
then pick a trade, pick a trade that likely makes a fair amount of money, some pay more than others, and see if it's your passion. See if you really like doing it or if it feels like work. If it feels like, oh crap, I gotta go do it, then, it, then it's not for you. Just like college isn't for everyone. It's not a one size fits all. So no, you gotta love what you do. And so whether you're physically doing something, whether you're technically doing something, you're writing technology, you're working for, for a tech company, if that's your passion, then chase it. Go learn more. The world is so full, so education is so easy to get now compared to when, when we were kids. Everything's at our fingertip through technology. So you don't have to go to college to learn what you could learn at college. If you're a dedicated student, tune in, man. The classes are all available online. Do this stuff at your pace. You could do it faster than four or five years of going to college and for far less money. And get out there in the world and start doing it. What is it? You want to learn how to play the guitar? It's the same thing. You got to pick the thing up, take some lessons, and then practice and practice and practice and practice and practice. Practice harder than you play if you want to get good at something. Business is the same as learning an instrument or being a, an elite athlete. If you're not doing it all the time, you're not going to get better at it. And so, yeah, man, follow the dream and then change it. And that's a wrap. I'm Jeff Sloan. Join us each week for more great stories behind business success on Business Biography. Thanks for listening to Business Biography on the great voice of the Great Lakes, 760 WJR.